This is a brain organoid, a type of AI-human brain hybrid, and I wanted to find out whether this and other types of AI can feel pain. Hi, I'm Michael. I previously worked at a think tank called Sentience Institute, which works on issues relating to digital minds. So when I see something like this come up, I feel compelled to talk about it. Disclaimer, obviously I don't represent Sentience Institute's views. The last few years have felt like breakneck pace in AI development, especially for large language models and diffusion models. If this pace continues, or even if it only slows down a bit, the world will change a lot very soon. I could talk about graphs like this and like this and what they mean for the future, but others have already done a good job at that and that's not the focus of this video. So I'll link to those in the description. Instead, I just want to point out that people who have been on the conservative side of predictions about AI capabilities have been wrong time and time again. This progress in AI leads to a whole host of concerns about AI safety. Artificial general intelligence may be one of the most powerful tools we've ever created, so it's important to make sure that it does what we want it to do. I am deeply concerned about AI safety, but that's a topic for another day. Today I'm talking about what happens if AI becomes sentient, or in other words, what happens if they develop the capacity for pleasure and pain. Sentience Institute uses the term digital minds to refer to AI that have, or are perceived to have, mental faculties like reasoning, experience, agency, and sentience. Artificial sentience is any non-natural entity that develops sentience, like an AI that develops sentience, for example, but there could be other forms, like a hybrid biological digital entity. This right here plausibly constitutes a hybrid AI that, if not already sentient, may be sentient in the future. We'll talk about this very soon, I promise, but there's a bit more context that I want to cover first. The reason I think it's important to talk about artificial sentience is the same reason I think it's important to talk about any sentient being, like humans or non-human animals. There are a lot of reasons to think that things will go badly with artificial sentience. One is the potential number of digital minds that could exist in the future, even just on Earth. They would take up much less space per sentient being than you or I, or even some of the smallest insects. There could plausibly be trillions of them in the future, running on servers, even if we never leave this planet. Given our track record of how we treat others, we'd probably find a way to exploit them and ignore their interests. We might wipe their memories, or restart them, or do all sorts of unethical stuff. Since digital minds could be really efficient workers, it seems likely that we'd exploit them for their mental labor. And it's hard to think of something that might replace that. With other moral dilemmas, there are more plausibly technological solutions that could replace the suffering, like cellular agriculture replacing the need for animal farming. It's just hard to think of something that could replace digital minds from an efficiency standpoint. So we should be hesitant about creating digital minds unless we're sure they're going to be treated well. I think antinatalists should be particularly concerned about the creation of artificial sentience because it's a whole new category of sentience. Once it's here, it would be very hard to get rid of. I think an okay, but admittedly not amazing analogy would be imagine if we had the opportunity to stop animal farming from ever beginning in the first place. I think that's possibly the crossroad that we're at here with artificial sentience. We may not even realize when AI becomes sentient. Part of the problem is we don't have a good understanding of why we're sentient. So we don't really know what AI would need in order to be considered sentient or even possibly sentient. It seems pretty likely that it would be in a spectrum from not sentient to sentient rather than some kind of binary, oh, it's not sentient, now suddenly it is. Large language models are already telling a lot of people that they're sentient, but most experts don't think this is actually evidence that they are sentient. There are several competing models of consciousness that have been proposed that try and explain why we are conscious. Some of the theories include integrated information theory, global workspace theory, higher order theory, attention schema theory, and re-entry and predictive processing theories. IIT even proposes a measurement for consciousness, which is the perturbational complexity index, which measures the complexity of EEG responses to magnetic stimulation. And Butlin et al. have proposed a list of indicator properties that we can look for to try and determine when an AI might become conscious. Maybe you're thinking to yourself, Okay, but I just don't believe that AI can ever become sentient. It's just a matter of only biological minds having the capacity for sentience. I don't really have the time to get into the weeds on that topic in this episode, except to say that, well, even if that were the case for completely digital AI, maybe hybrid biological digital AI could get around that and have sentience. So that brings us back to this brain organoid, or cerebral organoid, called BrainAware, which to me kind of reminds me of RoboBrain from the Fallout series, I'm not sure if that was intentional. This isn't what it actually looks like. You may recognize this style from, well, every single AI depiction of non-embodied AI ever. This is BrainAware. These are four of the 16 human brain organoids, each with around 10,000 living human brain cells. On their website, Swedish company FinalSpark, who are developing BrainAware, say that biocomputing is the next evolutionary leap for AI because the growth of AI under its current architecture is limited by high energy use, and biocomputing will cause AI to be 1 billion times more efficient. Brain organoids are tissue cultures made from stem cells. In the case of BrainAware, the driving force behind their computation is dopamine. Dopamine is used by the human brain to give us a sense of pleasure and satisfaction, and it's very motivating. It plays a pretty big role in how we learn. 
The fact that these brain organoids are using the same reward system to dish out pleasure as our brains use strikes me as somewhat concerning to say the least. But I do have to clarify that I'm not actually a neuroscientist and I can't comment too deeply on what the implications of this are. So BrainAware consists of 16 mini brains, each made from human brain tissue. The cells are housed in an incubator which provides nutrients and controls temperature. It works by transferring data from a computer to the cells for computation and then back via wires. Final Spark says that BrainAware could improve our understanding of human brains and lead to developments in the treatment of neurological diseases. You might just think, well, no big deal, we'll just stop using them when they become sentient. But as I mentioned, the problem is, how will we know when they become sentient? They might not have a means to communicate with us that they are. And even if they could, as I mentioned with the case of large language models, they can tell us that they're sentient, but this doesn't necessarily mean that they are sentient. And I think that we can't be sure already that they aren't sentient to some degree. I think we should apply the cautionary principle here. And I'm not even convinced that we would stop even if we knew they were sentient. I mean, we do animal testing and we know they're sentient. Brain organoids can respond to light, so we know they respond to at least some stimuli, but this doesn't necessarily, again, mean that they are sentient. Another thing I want to point out is that brain organoids die. Previously they died after 10 days, and now Final Spark says they die after 100 days. Now I do want to be careful about what die means here, because that can obviously be an ethically loaded word. Just remember that plants die, and that's not an ethically loaded thing. That's just what biological life does, whether it's sentient or not. But it is certainly one of the defining differences between hybrid and purely digital AI. So let's talk about what people think about digital minds, because I think that's really interesting as well. SI found in their Artificial Intelligence, Morality and Sentience 2023 supplement study that 20% of Americans already think that some AI are sentient and 10% think that ChatGPT is sentient. If people thought that AI wasn't sentient but it was, then that would be bad, obviously. But if people think that they are sentient when they're not, that could have some important implications as well. Ideally, and no surprises, we want to be right about whether or not AI has sentience. Thomas Metzinger coined the term social hallucination to refer to the possibility that we collectively start to perceive AI as sentient even if they're not, because they become increasingly realistic. As I pointed out with the SI data, this is already happening to an extent. Eric Schwiskebel worries that this would lead to a scenario where we meaningfully direct resources away from humans and animals, who we know are sentient, to AI who aren't sentient. Some more interesting statistics from SI's AIMS 2023 main survey include that 61.5% of people support a ban on the development of sentient AI, which is encouraging. 71.1% believe that sentient AIs deserve to be treated with respect. And 57.4% believe in adopting welfare standards to protect sentient AI. But before you celebrate too much, 84.7% also believe that AI should be subservient to humans. Another survey by Gabrielle Lima and colleagues found that Americans are supportive of protecting electronic agents from cruelty. I'm saying US Americans a lot here, but that's just because these types of surveys haven't really been done much in the rest of the world, but I think it would be cool to see. Now the question is, specifically what can we do about the artificial sentience cause area? I think, to some extent, the best thing to do right now is this to try and work out what the best thing to do is. Some people talk about slowing down the speed of technology or AI development, and others talk about passing a bill to ban the creation of sentient AI. Thomas Metzinger has proposed a moratorium on the development of artificial sentience until 2050. In his words, strictly banning all research that directly aims or knowingly risks the emergence of artificial consciousness on post-biotic carrier systems. Another idea we could explore is that of expanding humanity's moral circle. Our moral circle is a way of visualizing how we see other entities in a moral sense. For example, the center of our moral circle might be our tribe, so to speak, or our closest friends and family. Then the outer circle might be some animals. The frontier might be other animals. And then the outside of the circle would be anything we don't care at all about. The makeup and size of these moral circles will differ between individuals, of course. Maybe one person would have pigs at the center of their moral circle because they grew up with a family pet pig, whereas another person might have them outside of their circle. Expanding this moral circle so that beings move towards the center of the circle is something that we should probably strive for. Arguably, a lot of moral atrocities have been the result of a lack of moral inclusion, like slavery, genocides, and animal farming. If you're worried about this problem of artificial sentience, obviously donations to charities working on this problem is a good way to help, and I'll mention some of those in a moment, but having more talented people working on this problem would also be highly valuable. In terms of career paths, obviously philosophy of mind and ethics are important, but also social science to understand what the world would look like if we had digital minds interacting with humans. Computer science might be helpful when it comes to trying to understand what it would take for an AI to be sentient, advocacy and communications to make more people think about this issue and take it more seriously, and policy and political roles to try and get beneficial legislation passed. In terms of organizations, there aren't that many. Sentience Institute, Center for Reducing Suffering, Center on Long-Term Risk, 
Global Catastrophic Risk Institute, Legal Priorities Project, I may have missed a few. Future of Humanity Institute at Oxford had some people working on this, but they were permanently closed a few months ago. In terms of academics, there are relatively more, and a few that come to mind are David Chalmers, Maddie Wilkes, David Gunkel, Kurt Gray, Eric schwitz gerbel and Thomas Metzinger. I think the development of large language models like ChatGPT in the last few years has led to people taking this issue more seriously, but that's also come with increasing capabilities. So I don't know if I'd necessarily chalk that one up as a net good. I am curious about what the next big media cycle will be in this space and how that conversation goes. Hopefully it will include moral consideration of the potentially sentient AI. I'd like to sincerely thank LD for being my first recurring sponsor on Buy Me A Coffee. That's most likely going to go towards a green screen or a lavalier mic to go with this bad boy. If you'd like to support me to make more of these videos rather than looking for gainful employment, you can make a donation to my Buy Me A Coffee page, which I've linked below. And thank you to you, the viewer. And I wanna know what you think about all this. Would the introduction of artificial sentience be good or bad? My next video will be about whether a future where we spread sentient minds across the galaxy, whether biological or digital, would be a good thing or a bad thing. Or in other words, do we expect the far future to be good or bad if we don't go extinct? So please subscribe and stick around if that interests you. That's it, bye.